welcome, welcome back to Hurting the People Do Cry podcast. My name is Willa Powell. I am your host. I do have with me Mr. Damian Blair. He, he'll be here in a little bit. And I also want to introduce to you Pastor Irma, Irma Berry Scott, Pastor of Overcoming Ministry. She's the host of Broadcast Overcoming with Pastor Irma, radio station Spread the Gospel. She loves the Lord. She is an overcomer, and one of her favorite saying is, Lord, have mercy. Hey, Pastor, how you doing? Welcome. Hello, Willa. Uh, thank you for inviting me you, on today. Yes, ma'am. I was so glad that you uh, decided to take the invitation to come and speak at this podcast. I am so happy that you're here. I tell you, I tell you, I was telling people, I said, I got to get this young lady on this podcast because I know she got a story to tell. What you think, David? Hey, man, I'm ready to hear it. <laughs> All right, y'all, this is um, Damien. He's with us, and he's one of my hosts as well, my co host he's, yeah. he's a great man of God, and he'll do anything. He's come a long way as well. Now, as you all know, I always do my podcast out with a prayer. And I always have my guests to start the prayer. So, Pastor, if you don't mind going into prayer with us, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we love you. We thank you for still being God. We thank you for still being all-powerful, all-knowing, and being everywhere. So, Father, we thank you on today for our life, our health, and our strength. And as we enter into this podcast, God, you let your spirit reign. Pour out on us that those who would hear will be blessed by your word and by your uh, glory. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> All right, Pastor. Um, as you know, this podcast um, platform is about your story. So guess what? We're going to let you go head on with it because we know you got something to say. Oh, my goodness. Yes, ma'am. We know you got something to say. <laughs> Damien, we're going to back you up whenever we can. Yeah. We're going to back you up whenever we can do. We'll help you out. But we don't know your story. Only you can tell your story. Oh, my. Hey, man. <laughs> One of the things that I don't like to talk about is me. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, that's okay. Um, but, yes, there is a story. Um, behind my praise. Yes, ma'am. Um, there is a story. God has brought me um, from a long way. Right. Um, I'll just go back to uh, when we um, had recently met. Yes. Um, you had asked me to speak um, for Heard hurting. The people do cry. Um, and I remember preaching the message. Yeah, yes, Lord. Memoirs of an Overcoming Woman. Yes, Lord, you uh, preached uh, it. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Uh, Lord. And I was able to preach that because I've had to overcome various things mm -hmm. in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, one being, uh, when I was a little girl, um, I used to have to go to Winston State every day after I went to Little Melvin. I don't know. I'm dating myself now. <laughs> um, little Melvin Elementary School. And I would go because my mother worked at Winston Same State. So after school, I would go to her until she got from work and we'd walk home. Well, at this particular time, uh, um, I'm in her building. She was a housekeeper there. I'm in her building running and playing and talking like normal. And this man uh, uh, coerced me, I can say that word now, and then I didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. I just followed him into the auditorium. And uh, from there, he tried to molest me. Oh, but I thank God for the sense enough, yes. Lord have mercy, oh, to run. <laughs> Lord have mercy, I ran. When he unzipped his pants, I ran. Mm -hmm. And thank God when I ran out the auditorium, there were two people that were standing out there so he couldn't run after Lord, me. I thank God he let me get away. Yes. There are too many women who are not able to get away. Yes, yes. But God bless me to get away. Yes. Uh, um, I've had other encounters in my life. Um, when I got married, um, I thought it was to death do us part, but it didn't work out that way. 
It was only two years. I was married, had my son. Uh, thank God for my son, yes. Stephen. Amen. Great musician in the Lord. Um, but after that, two years after my marriage um, fell apart, I went into a depression. Lord have mercy. I didn't know what it was then. Uh, back then, I didn't know what depression right, was. Exactly. Uh, uh, but I knew I couldn't function. Um, I would go to work, I would go home, and I would go to bed. Mm. I would go to work, go home. If we had church, I'd go to church. I was still preaching, mm -hmm. still preaching, and then go to bed. My mother was raising my son for me. Mm. Um, but after eight long years mm. of suffering through that depression, uh, the Lord sent a church, uh, uh, we were in revival or something, a church from Charlotte came up. Mm -hmm. And two ladies prayed for me at the altar. Mm. Uh, didn't get delivered at the altar, but they took me to the back. Lord have mercy. <laughs> when they took me to the back, that spirit lifted off of, of me, yes. and I have not been the same since. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, don't tell me that God does not answer Prayer. Yes, he does. Lord, yes, have mercy. The prayers of the righteous yes. do avail much. Yes, ma'am. I'm a living witness. Yes, ma'am. Um, I've had several things to happen to me. Um, on the job, um, uh, I was an operation manager. I'm, you probably remember the Duke Power locations. Mm -hmm. You used to go and pay your bill mm -hmm. or whatever. I used to manage those offices for a subcontractor for Duke Power. And... Uh, uh, when they were ready, did a good job, um, Duke Power liked me, uh, <laughs> but uh, um, the owner uh, had some people in his ear that didn't like me, mm -hmm. and he decided to do away with my job, Lord mm -hmm. have mercy, uh, do away with my position. Uh -huh. uh, in other words, you fired, uh -huh. uh, 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 but I'll tell you how the Lord works. Within a month's time, I was working uh, 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 for another company who was over his company. Mm. Y'all ain't going to help me. Amen. Lord have mercy. Uh, <laughs> God flipped the script mm. on that. Mm -hmm. um, where he used to be my boss, I was now his. Y'all yes. ain't going to help now, me. Won't he do Lord it? Won't have he mercy. Do it? He'll flip a script. <laughs> flip it Lord on. have mercy. <laughs> and within two years, that company went out of business. Wow. I stayed with the company that I went with for over 14 years Lord, till my mother got sick and I quit. Mm. Lord, have mercy to take care of my mother. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been various things in my life. I've seen the hand of God mm. uh, reach out and lift me up out of something that the devil thought would destroy yeah. me. Lord, have mercy. That's what God for. lifted me up. Yes. Over it. That's why I can say I'm an overcomer. Yeah. Because I came out with the victory. Yeah. I didn't just survive it. I overcame it. Overcame. I came out with the victory. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. You man. better tell that story. <laughs> I remember when you did come and do the um, the uh, hurting people do cry mm -hmm. conference that I had put on. Okay. And you was telling, you was talking about. Write your own story. Absolutely. Write your own story. And we, the way you put it, mm -hmm. it stuck with me. Because you have to write it from the beginning to the end. Absolutely. Ain't no stopping. Ain't no middle part to it. Absolutely. And you called it, you called it something. I can't remember uh, what you call it. Um, biography or something about Memoir. your life. Memoir about your life. Mm -hmm. And when you went into that, I tell you, I think everybody in the, in the church was, was shouting down. Mm. <laughs> I know I had my little wheelchair going back and forth. <laughs> but that was a, that was a great, uh, great um, memory that I, uh, of you. Um, I know you was talking about earlier, you know, how you got away. Mm -hmm. And like you say, a lot of people didn't get away mm -hmm. uh, from child molesting mm -hmm. or any type of abuse, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's a that's a um, great story because I know it took a while for me to get away, you know. And the, the, the way I really got away, I forgave. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. My forgiveness helped me get it away. Absolutely. My forgiveness. And, uh, you know, you still think about it, but what can you do about it now? Because it's gone. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I really appreciate that part of what you were saying that, you know, you got away through God's grace and mercy. Absolutely. That nothing didn't happen to you. And I know you were talking about at that um, conference about preaching. Can you talk about the preaching department, about the preaching? Um, I've had some some stories in the church. Right, in the church, <laughs> exactly. In the church. I know that, right? um, I've had. About church <laughs> <laughs> Come on. But there's a difference between church and people and saints. That's, that's right. That's it. There's yeah. a difference. There's a difference. Uh, um, everybody who is a minister or who is a pastor have not been called to be a minister. Or they see money, they see cha-ching, I can get money, I can manipulate, I have control over people. Uh, um, I was in a, a particular ministry, and um, um, the pastor um, um, said that he wanted to be my sugar daddy. <laughs> and that's exactly what I did, brother. I laughed. <laughs> that's exactly. Um, you got to be kidding. Wow. Um, 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 these are some of the things that we've had to overcome mm-hmm. as women. As a w- woman minister, uh, men try to take advantage of situations. Mm. They'll call you in to preach. But they got a whole nother agenda, Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. Uh, But if you are saved and you got standards, you can lift up your standard and bring them back Mm -hmm. in line. Mm -hmm. You don't have to fall for the okie doke. Lord have mercy. Had another uh, pastor um, who ended up going to prison for a rape. And he calls me from prison. And says that I have an opportunity to go out west somewhere, Arkansas or somewhere. And would you come with me? No, in no, no, prison? no, 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 no. He no. was in prison. In prison. Uh, but if you have standards, people mm-hmm. won't get away with that. That part. Yes. You let them know. Oh no, you got the wrong one. Uh, we don't do that over here. Uh, this is the time for you to get your life together mm. and not to be uh, plotting your next move. Mm-hmm. Lord, present. I've had some things to happen, mm. but I'm an overcomer. The enemy tried to <laughs> snare me. Uh, hold on, I got to snap him out of whatever it's going through his mind because he's okay. thinking. Boy. So I'm, 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 I'm thinking. I'm, what <laughs> yes, I'm trying to do is give a break so I can. Um, he I, a couple, I have a couple of things I want to, I want to okay. say and a couple of questions mm-hmm. and everything. So I'm, that's what I'm doing. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, 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 I'm lining it up in my mind. <laughs> you want I'm my paper and pencil, in it, so to speak? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. You need my paper and pencil. You know oh, I forget. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, on pastor. I'm ready to hear. <laughs> okay, so um, well, of course that um, I, I I just to hear that about me and pastors and how we do take uh, our opportunity or our, our calling, our position, and, and we we really do take advantage of a lot of situations and stuff. And I I, I see that, and I hear that coming a lot from the men pastors. And it does make us look real bad. And it's amazing how we can do all this, that, and still have a problem with a woman preaching the gospel. Mm. Absolutely. Now, yeah, because we we, we get in certain positions and and we do these these things. We come on to these women and we try to overpower them because of our position, our calling, and maybe the hype that we get from other people. Mm -hmm. So being in that position right there, um, that that strike because I, I I can recognize that and I see that there and I see a lot of men doing things like that there and I know a lot of men for the money too and not just and that's not just coming from men that's coming from women preachers too oh, yeah. I've seen both of them I've Absolutely. seen people preach and go back in the back room and count the mud up and split it split it between them oh, Absolutely. Yes. and that's what they doing and I, and I see a lot of people they come and and uh, uh, and excuse me for saying this this might offend a lot of people. You have a lot of people that, that won't come and preach at your church or minister if you don't give them their stipend that they want to receive. That's true. This is what I, this is my stipend 
Uh, I went to school for this. I learned this here. I did this here. And this is what you have to pay me in order for me to come over here and give you something that was freely given to me. Absolutely. Right. You know, I, I right. Come on. And, and I Church house it. pimps. <laughs> Y'all don't mind me. I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, I do have one. I have a, I have a question. Um, he talked about a lot of stuff about uh, molestation and coming out and everything and um, everything you went through. Um, and I know there's a lot of women and even men that are in a certain positions and situations of abuse mm-hmm. and they don't have the sense enough to run. Right. Well, it's sometimes it's just that they don't have the power there you go. Um, to overcome it, Right. Um, to get out of it. Um, that's why I, w- I love for the focus to be on Jesus. Uh, 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 when we empower people with Jesus right. and not religion, they can have the strength to say no. Amen. They can have the strength to let, some- to let somebody know that you can't run over me or you, you can't overpower me. Because the Jesus in me is greater than the devil in you. Yes, yes, Lord yes, have mercy. Yes. Uh, um, uh, and I see a lot of women, um, children, young people, caught up because of power-hungry people, mm-hmm. um, men and women. That's right. Um, you have to be careful of both now. But if we keep the message on Jesus... We can empower the people right. to be overcomers. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it's hard for children mm-hmm. if they don't know God. And it's hard for them to really get away because they don't know how. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you talk with a lot of women that's been abusing abusive relationships, mm-hmm. don't know how to get away. Mm-hmm. And you know, they're talking about it's easier said than done. And that's true. But when they're so scared, like you said, don't have Jesus, that be able to fight that demon is make it harder for a person to try to get away. Absolutely. You know, so. And yeah, definitely. Um, I, I meet a lot of people, and one of them, uh, in a, that, that a stay in a, an abusive environment. Even in, in a, and I heard you talk about the marriage, and, and you thought you'd be married forever, but it didn't last. But I know some people who have stayed in a marriage longer than they should have endured abuse and hurt and all kind of things coming from inside because they feel like, well, I ought to stay here. What What do you have to say to someone like that? God never called us to be abused. Go ahead and tell he me. came to set us free. Oh, man, I'm going home and leaving and packing my stuff tonight. Yeah. <laughs> man, my okay, case. I'm saying, I'm just, hey, man, don't y'all die packing tonight. Get off my park. <laughs> I'm gone. Give me my little Nintendo. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Uh, uh, but people are staying too long because religion tells us right. to stay there. I've heard mothers, um, church mothers, tell people mm-hmm. who are in abusive relationships to stay there. Mm-hmm. And what? No, God never told us right. to be abused. Oh, we maybe we, we need to that separate. Spirit of fear, that spirit of fear. Yes. Uh uh um manipulation will yes. cause you to stay. Yes. Narcissistic yes. behavior yes. will cause you to stay. Yeah. Yes. Uh um in things that are unhealthy. Mm-hmm. And not only is it unhealthy for you, but it's unhealthy for the family. It sure is. You the know children, that about that. The children. The children. And that's why a lot of people stay because of the children. You know. But you can always maintain taking care of your children. You don't have to be there. That's right. To take care of your children. Mm -hmm. Is that really taking care of your children? No. Exposing them to that kind of behavior. Yes. That's right. And we wonder why they grow up Mm. and they do what they Mm. do. They act like they act. Mm. They want to commit suicide. Mm. They don't know how to treat a spouse. That's right. Mm. They... They, they are just wow and out yes, there. Yes, yes, Because yes. we kept them in yeah. an unhealthy relationship. And they going to do what they see. Well, they Absolutely. Do what they they exactly. do what they see. That's exactly true. And, that, you know, I try to tell people that if you're not meant to be together, maybe don't, it wore out. Mm-hmm. The love is not there no more. 
why stay? You know, and I hear a lot, I do it for my children. You, you're affecting those children. Mm-hmm. You really are. And, you know, you tell people, these kids keep stuff in their mind for a long time. Absolutely. And these kids that's growing up today don't forget nothing. Because Absolutely. the Bible says these kids are going to be weaker mm-hmm. and they're going to be wiser. Mm-hmm. And these kids don't forget nothing. I remember my grandson, um, my second grandson, to, next to the oldest, you know, he remembers stuff when he was a little boy. Mm-hmm. And we was talking last week. And he like, gee, Ma, I remember. I remember. And you think they're not sitting there listening and looking? And all that stuff, is they like a robot. Yeah, they it's calculated into their they mind. Absolutely. You know? Pay attention. Um, um, I have another question for you, too. Um, because I, I'm, I've listened to how you said over eight years, you went through the depression and everything. And even though you didn't know what it was then, you recognize it now. Mm. What could you say to somebody who is going through a failed marriage or has just got a divorce and they thought like you it would be forever and they're beginning to spiral down into that depression state? What would you, what words could you give them to uplift them and just to let them know that, hey, every, not only everything's going to be okay, but you don't have to go down like that? It's okay to get help. Amen. If I had known uh, um, um, what I was experiencing, right, I would have gotten some help, right, uh, professional help. Professional. I ain't help. talking about going to sister so and so. Sister so and so. Uh, you can't be. professional. You can't trust everybody. Help, right? Absolutely, because they know how to get you out. Mm-hmm. They know how to help lift you. That and prayer. Prayer. Yes, you know, don't ever lose God in it. Never. Uh, but it's all right to get help. We get help for our high blood pressure. That's right. We get help for our diabetes. That's right. We get help for cancer. Uh, we need to get help for our mental state as well. Okay. Oh, amen. Um, it's okay. It's not an embarrassment. It's not anything to be ashamed of. Um, I would tell anybody. Get some help. Don't go through it alone. Right. I right. went through it alone. Alone, yeah. I fought my way through it mm. alone. And it didn't have to be that way. Right. Did your um your son uh, did he see a lot of stuff that was going on? No, because he was a baby. My okay. husband and I separated when he was three weeks old. Wow. 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 Absolutely. So he don't know nothing. Can I ask you a question? Oh, he knew it was a bottle. <laughs> I, 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 I got to ask this question coming from a man now. Um, not the saying that I don't know who, what went on or anything. Do you? Can you see yourself playing a part of that breakup, though? Of course. It always t- it took two to get married. <laughs> Hey Amen. Tell the truth now. <laughs> it takes two to Tell the truth. Go. There you go. <laughs> it takes two, it takes two baby. Yeah, yeah. I, I would Wrong tell podcast. you, I was young Wrong and dumb. <laughs> Wrong podcast. Did not know. I don't even know the song. I didn't know the song. I didn't know the song. I didn't know the commercial so well. Go ahead on pass. Pray. But it takes two. It, I, I had my part in it as well. Not be of being manipulative, not being um, evil or wicked, right. right? But just did not know any better in mm-hmm. some things. Amen. And that I could have done better, better. Mm-hmm. if I knew better. If I knew better, exactly. I uh, know um, my first husband. Um, we went through a lot. He was my high school sweetheart. We was friends for a long time, mm-hmm. and uh, we we got married and stuff and. You know, sometimes you see things, but you want to, don't see it, but you, it's right there in front of, but you want to overlook it, mm-hmm. and then you want to try to make your marriage work and make it work, and, you know, a lot of people say the Bible says, stick it, stay in it, you know, it's going to get better, and blah, 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 but how much can you take? Absolutely. And, you know, while being married to him, you know, I lost a lot. Mm-hmm. I lost a lot. I had a car, like I would get the car fixed every week. And I was working at R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company making money. And I'm like, what in the world? I said, I can't get my rent paid every month. I'm in my 401k. 
like he was just an ATM machine, you know, trying to save some money. And can't even save that. Can't even save, couldn't even save a dollar, man. Put money in a pocket Damn. with holes in it. Car breaking down, I had to borrow a car for my daddy. The defroster wasn't working, I had to take my arm on the outside and Ooh. wipe the mirror while I'm driving. Mm. You know, and I said, wait a minute, this ain't right. And then a friend of mine, you know, she introduced, you know, I wasn't going to church like I do now. I wasn't no church, but I grew up in a church. Right. And, um, you know, she introduced me to start coming to church with her, and I started going to church and going to church Sunday, every Sunday, bringing my daughter them to church and everything. And some say, well, if something got to give, if something got to give, because I was losing more than what I was gaining. Mm-hmm. And when I left him, he was at work, and I had paid some some people at the soup kitchen to help me load the truck while he was at work. And we load that truck. I think they loaded within one hour. I was going. I had already got my own apartment and I had all that stuff switched over. And, and you know, I had told him. I said, "You better get you some lights. You better get you some some water, cause I'm gone." And apparently, he didn't believe me. So he was working and stuff, and I had load my stuff, and I moved, and I left his little stuff. But I didn't want nothing but my daughter's stuff in my bed, in my TV. I didn't want no kitchen set. I didn't want mm-hmm. nothing. I left everything there. And that mm-hmm. let me know I was tired of what I was going through. Mm-hmm. When you're tired, you're tired. If you ain't tired, you keep going through it because you're not tired mm-hmm. of going through mm-hmm. it. And I said, when I left, Pastor, God restored everything back to me. Mm-hmm. Everything. I got a car. I had my place. I had my my house with furnace, furniture, everything. And I mean, I would like I said, I'm going to church. I start paying my tithes because I said, okay, God, I'm not paying my tithes, so you're gonna get this money one way or the other. Mm-hmm. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I start paying my tithes and stuff. And Pastor, God just restored everything back to me tenfold. Bless God. And I and I think about that. Um, in the Bible, uh, what's his name, Job? Mm-hmm. I thought about Job, the story of Job, how he lost it all, but he never gave up on his faith with God, and I never Absolutely. did that. And God restored everything, and right there, you know, God said, you got to get away, because how I'm going to bless you, you still in a mess. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I can't bless a mess. Mm-hmm. So when I got away from the mess, <laughs> God started blessing. Amen. And, you know, it, it's hard for some people to do it because, like you said, your significant other scare you. Mm-hmm. Uh, may say, you go and do this, I'm going to do this to you and blah, 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 because you don't know the state of mind of a lot of people. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And it's, it's really hard for a lot of people. But like you said, when you see Jesus and put your eyes and focus on Jesus and trust him and have the faith, Absolutely. You can do anything. Absolutely. You can do anything. Follow his instructions. Follow his instructions. And it took a long time for me to, to do that because, like I say, I wasn't in the church like I should have been, mm-hmm. but I grew up in the church. Mm-hmm. So, you know what they say? You raise a man that they're going to always come back to it. Mm-hmm. Come back to it. That's right. And you don't know how they're going <clears> to <throat> come back to exactly. it. Exactly. Exactly. You got to let God do what he's going to do let to right. bring you back. That's right. it. Some people have to hit rock bottom <clears throat> to come back. Mm. That's true. Some people end up in the hospital before they come back. Mm-hmm. Some end up in jail. Mm. Before they come back. Mm. But if we let God do it, he'll get them back. Yes, amen. Yes. Amen. amen. I, um, and this is the this is something that I, I kind of look at. I think it's kind of funny. So uh, um uh recently I've had a um, couple uh people been coming to me who was dealing with uh, relationships problems and I, I've been um giving them um advice and um just lead them in the word of God. Um, and these are people that love their spouse and everything and this and that and want to be together and everything like that. They're, but the whole time they're coming to me, I'm in a relationship with a woman that I don't love. I'm married, and, and I, I, was, I was sitting there and I was saying, Lord, I, I don't want to be here. But they're coming to me for advice, and I have to give them advice to help them strengthen and to stay in there. And but the but the only difference was because they were in love with him, and I'm like, I'm not in love, Lord. And are you not in feeling with them 
is the commitment still there? That's what love is. Right. It's commitment. Right. We so busy thinking on the emotional or the feeling portion. Of when love. that is gone, we think the, after the love is gone, right. it used to be right. It's right. right. We think that. But love is actually the commitment. Commitment. Yeah, the commitment. I'm still committed. I've still been committed. Um, um, I'm committed because, but I'm only there. But I, I wouldn't lie to you. I'm gonna be honest with you. I've only been there because of my kids over the last couple of years. So you ask God, relight the fire. It used to be a fire there. Lord, relight the fire. Right. Because the commitment the is still there. Sometimes the fire goes out. Day day by day uh, activities, really, the fire go out. I really wish that was my situation. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much deeper. I really wish that was my uh, situation. But see, it ain't I just didn't. There no more. Yeah. <laughs> the light, it's dark. <laughs> oh Lord. But 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 we recently uh, uh, decided to uh, 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 go our separate ways. <laughs> And uh, that's what we're in, and I, I'm not speaking on everything because it's, too, it's for, and I don't want to be the one that's point the fingers and say you, and you, it's you. Not my business. And that, that, yeah, I was, no, no, I'm not saying that. I'm okay with that, there, but it was just that I was sitting here and I, and I was like, Lord, you're bringing all these people to me mm-hmm. that are going through these issues, and, and 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 I'm like, how can you assign me something and we feel the so maybe God is still speaking to you through mm. them. Mm. Ooh, there it is. Hey, Amen. Ooh, there it is. I like that. Ooh, there I it like is. that. Ooh. Oh, that's the wrong podcast. <laughs> that's the really wrong podcast, Lord. <laughs> But amen. That, that, um, and I, that's why I, say I love this podcast because I can get what I need to mm-hmm. in this situation and stuff. And definitely, you a powerful woman of God. And, and like I said, I do listen to you on the radio and everything. Um, so I, I'm, I'm gonna take that into consideration and in the prayer and everything like that. There. And uh, if so be, Amen. Absolutely. But if and not, whatever He says, we're gonna do ten backflips out in that yard later on. <laughs> <laughs> if he said let it go, let it go. Yes, but you ma'am. do what you can to make it work. To make it work, yes, man. It takes two. Yes, man. Yes. So when, two. so when, so let me ask you a question. When, and I know a lot of people, probably this is probably a popular question that people haven't asked. When, when has it got to the point to where you've done enough, or you've done more than enough? Or you think you've done or you more than think enough. you've done more than enough. When does it come to a point that you say, okay, you know what? It's time. When God releases you. Mm, there you go. We can't go on our own human right. feelings mm-hmm. and right. emotions. That's right. We have to whatever God instructs us. Whatever God instructs us. Follow the instructions. Amen. And what they say, if you keep on doing the same thing, and that's what Pastor Amen. Mitchell said, you keep doing the same thing, you're going to keep getting the same results. You get the same I'm results. You. I like that, though, now, because I know a lot of people that do and have gotten to that point uh, um, or that stay into abusive relationships, and they feel like you said for religion, and they want to know when it comes to that point. When, when, when is it okay for me to leave? Now I feel like somebody blacking your eye every other weekend. Oh, now that is, maybe on Tuesday. Every other weekend, you Thursday, got one time. You know well, absolutely. Yeah. No, 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 no. You know, you know that's what, that. what I think. No, what? We don't do that. Uh, uh, yeah. that's 10 you, you don't put your hands on nobody, right? That's, that's assault. So yeah. you're yeah, that's 10 to you 20 going to right jail. Here. Yeah, that's, that's 10 to 20 for me. I can leave her. Yes, absolutely. After you don't beat on your body parts. Yeah, you don't. You don't put. You don't put your hands yeah. on people. No, you don't you do don't that. The other people, you the people you love, you don't abuse. Absolutely. If you mentally abuse and physically, if you absolutely. abuse them, and them men getting abused too. And what? Met, absolutely. I'm one of them. Don't tell me. Mental health is real. <laughs> we talk about really? it all the time. Mental health it's real. is real. It's, it's, it is real. People are. are Suicide. It's real. People are killing themselves people because of mental health. People are in love with narcissistic people. Yep. Mm-hmm. They are in love with people who are bipolar and mm. schizophrenic. Mm. And you end up being in relationship with these people 
where they need mental health. Exactly. They need a psychiatrist. They need more. They need more than just a a a, a, what, a counselor. Yeah, a therapist. They don't need to lay on nobody's chair. Mm-mm. They need a mental health. Yes. They need yes. some medicine at yes. night and some. Absolutely. Some of them too far gone for medication. Oh, okay. Some of them too far gone. They medicine definitely don't need help Jesus. Them. Absolutely. Yes. But he can do anything. But Any and everything. Any. So that's why you keep prayer involved. That's right. That's it. You know, I might not be able to live with you right now, but we can still work on the marriage. That's, that's, that's true. Man. Does that make sense? I hope that I'm makes, making sense. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. Some people get along better separated. That's right. Some people get, Some along, people better, get along better, better when, they when they're separated and they're yes. not in the house. Absolutely. Yes. And maybe and that focuses in, they can focus in on the marriage. Yes, yes. And the problems and the issues of the marriage and stuff. Because if you dare and you still you steady going through these issues, you don't have really time to work on them because you're piling up all this anger, yes. all this hurt, all this pain. And it keeps piling up before you're able to even sort through it. Absolutely. But you so, know one thing? It's all right to cry. Yes. Hurting people do cry. Hurting people do cry. Cry. And people hold this put stuff. Some, and that's some, what makes it bad. Put some, put some the more you hold, eye. the worse it gets. I think I did another one. <laughs> wait a minute, it Pastor, made wait, me cry. Wait, wait a minute, Pastor. <laughs> Give me a minute. Mm, this he over here beside me. He is cutting up. <laughs> he cutting up. <laughs> He don't, he, don't, he don't have no sense, man. I'm going to have to find me another co-host. How you want to be my co-host? <laughs> this one over here. Hey. It's okay. You know, I would <laughs> rather laugh than cry. I tell you, because I, I don't cry so stuff, honey. Man. Absolutely. And I have to do it in my private private closet. And, and listen. I've this, always been a person. I never wanted people to see me cry. Man, it's okay. I've listen. always cried in a private area. I have never, I never let my kids see me cry. Mm. I just, I just thought it just wasn't right for them to see that. Mm. But now I know it's okay. Absolutely, it's okay. I didn't never wanted my kids to see me hurt, you know. But now things I know. are gonna make you hurt. Things are gonna make you cry, but don't let them make you quit. That That's part. right. Exactly. Thanks so much. Absolutely. All right. Well, Pastor, I want to thank you for coming. I appreciate it. I really enjoyed this, thank this you. podcast right here. Um, you said a lot that's going to help a lot of people. Mm. That a lot of people probably didn't understand. You know what I mean? So uh, I really do appreciate it uh, for you coming. You've taken the time out to accept my invitation and showing up. Um, I want to let everybody out there know that Pastor Irma Barry Scott is on a radio station it's called Spread the Gospel. Spreading Amen. the Gospel. Spreading the Gospel. And Sundays at 8 a.m. Sunday at 8 a.m. What station is that? Is that like a station or? It is an uh, internet okay, it's radio station. Internet radio station. So please tune in. I'm going to start tuning in because I did not know. Well, I'm also on the Glory Network mm. okay. um, TV broadcast. Amen. Thursdays at 7 p.m. Okay. Um, you can get that on Roku, on um, your cable channel, mm-hmm. um, Apple TV, mm, okay. and the Glory Network dot org okay. on demand. Okay. okay. All right, listeners. So, I, I, please tune in. I'm telling you, she is a powerful. Woman of God, Lord, how mercy. When y'all get through listening to this one, Amen. Amen. <laughs> I promise you, you're going to want to continue to listen to her on the radio in the internet. Damien? Oh, man, i just like to thank her for coming and being a part of this today. She has really helped me personally on some things, and, and that's one good thing about this podcast. We get deep into issues because whatever we're going through and facing, we know somebody else out there is going through it, too. Exactly. And exactly. so I just thank God for the encouragement, Ms. Irma. Oh. And I, I love the broadcast. I will also be continuing listening to it. Amen, somebody. Yes. <laughs> and I'm just thankful for it. So it's good thank meeting you, you so man. Much. Well, I guess I want to thank you for being Damien Therapist today. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I need me one. Amen. I couldn't help him. I got that for free. <laughs> <laughs> 
got that session for free. No cost. What's that song Shirley Caesar say? No charge. No charge. No, no charge. <laughs> that might have cost me a couple hundred dollars, but I got it for free today. Bye, damn. You are dismissed. You are dismissed. I want to thank everybody again for tuning in today at this podcast. Um, like I say, please listen. We are now on iHeartRadio. Uh, we are on Spotify as well as YouTube. Um, you go to YouTube, put in Hurting Women Through Cry podcast. Please subscribe. The, every podcast that we do, it comes directly to you once it is loaded up onto the system as well as iHeart and as well as Spotify. I want to thank everybody for listening. Damien, can you go on out with a prayer with us, please? Amen. The Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you again, Heavenly Father, for bringing us together to fellowship in your name, first of all, Heavenly Father. Thank you for the word that was spoken, the encouragement, Heavenly Father. We pray that it reaches somebody, that it helps somebody, and it brings somebody out, Father. And let them always remember, God has not forgotten about them. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 If anybody would like to uh, come in and join this podcast, you can always um, send me an email at wpproduction2022.gmail.com. At wpproduction2022.gmail.com. Uh, send, me a t- send me an email. Let me know what you want to talk about. If you want to come and speak on the podcast, you can also um, send me your name. Um, you, can, you can send me a comment on the YouTube. Uh, Let me know who you are. Like I said, you can also reach out to me on the email. Just give me your name, phone number, however you want to do it. You don't even have to let me know who you is. We can just talk about whatever subject that you want to talk about. I want to thank everybody again for joining. Talk to God. He would love to hear from you. I love you, and God do too. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.